Waxing your skis. One of the most important and easiest things you can do to make sure that you're getting around the mountain without getting stuck in the flat spots and to make sure you're making it down faster than your friends. You wanna go fast, the best thing you can do is make sure your skis get waxed at least a couple times a year. If you ski a lot, then you're gonna to wanna to do it once a week. Um, I'm gonna run you through the basics of a very simple hot wax. Your wax, uh, there's a lot of different choices out there. Um, you know, many different brands, Toco, Home & Cole, Swix. Um, it's really up to you on which brand you wanna go with. Um, we're using Home & Cole here today in this video. Um, I run Home & Cole quite a bit on our test skis and on our demos and stuff like that. It's a great wax. Um, and, the, and the wax I'm gonna use today on our skis is Beta. Um, Beta is a red wax. It's kind of the middle uh, temperature range and it's also probably the most, or the, or the widest range of temperatures that you can hit. So, let me run you through the process. Rubber band, definitely need one of these to clear the brake out of the way. Um, I've got the Nordic Enforcer ski here, which is a little bit wider ski, so I'll run you through um, how to make sure you get everything covered there. You want to press the brake down with your left hand or right hand if you're right-handed. Um, this will bring the brakes up just as if you were stepping into the binding with your ski boot. Hook the band, run it over the top of the binding to the other side to make sure that you're free of the edge. Once you've got the brake all secured, flip your ski over. I like to run the tip to my right hand side because you always want to work the ski from the tip to the tail. Before you get started putting any wax on the ski, you want to make sure that you've got the base cleaned out. Um, you know, whether you've got any, you know, grunge from the last run of the last day you skied, um, you want to make sure the ski is relatively dry. Um, if there's any leftover wax on it, if you didn't do a good job scraping it last time, you want to make sure you scrape that off. So I usually just run a Run the scraper over it once before, you know, even you can see this ski had a little bit of grime on it um, just from one pass with the scraper. So, you know, maybe I'll make one more pass there, make sure that all that grime is off. Once you've got the ski all cleaned out, take your preferred wax off for what you believe the temperature is going to be the next day. I like to give the ski a nice little coat before I wax it. Uh, rub the wax on just by hand. This just helps protect the, the base of the ski when you're waxing it to make sure that you don't burn any areas of the ski. Um, so I like to rub a little bit on there and then you take your, your hot iron. Um, you know, from an iron standpoint, um, you can use even an iron that's built for a house, uh, or, you know, for doing your clothes. Um, if you don't want to go out and spend some money on a specific ski iron. The difference is you'll find is that, you know, your house iron obviously usually has a steaming aspect to it to, to get your cottons to you know, relax. Um, those holes are going to make it a little bit more difficult uh, with, the, with the wax, but they do work in a jiffy or a jam. Um, I've used it many times before when it's all I have. What I do is I flip the iron over, um, and basically we're gonna make an S shape down this ski so that I have a nice even pattern from right to left covering the whole ski all the way down. Starting the tip, work it back and forth. Go across with the iron, and then I usually just do one more strip right down the middle. Make sure I got enough on there. Um, obviously, if you have a wider ski, you can need a little more wax than if you have a narrower ski. So once you got the wax laid on there, take your iron. Um, I prefer the horizontal approach versus the, the vertical. Um, this way I get to cross the whole ski. One thing you do want to make sure is that if you do have a nice iron you just spend a bunch of money on, uh, if you always want to run it in the same direction that you did before so that if your edges do put any scratches in it, they're going with the flow of the ski. So working it back and forth. Don't be afraid to go forwards and backwards with this. Basically just trying to get a nice even coat across the entire ski. You always want to keep the iron moving. You never want to stop in one spot because you will burn your base or bubble your base, which is a super bummer because it's not really fixable. So I like to run back and forth on the ski, um, you know, three or four times. You're trying to heat the ski up nice and evenly throughout. You know, a good indication of whether you got the ski hot or not is whether you start to feel the warmth come through on the back side. And then I'll finish with one long continuous pass from the tip to the tail. 
Um, I'll then take this ski, set it aside, let it dry, um, and let that base material absorb that wax. You wanna let it sit for a little bit um, to really soak that in. The, the optimal setup is to let it sit overnight, um, but if you're, you know, if you're in a jam or something like that, um, or don't have time in the morning to scrape your skis, let it sit for you know, 20, 30 minutes or so, let it cool down and, and you can scrape it then. Okay, so now that my ski is cooled down, I'm ready to scrape. You always want to have a sharp scraper. So a sharp scraper is kind of the equivalent of a, of a sharp knife. A, a dull knife is a dangerous knife. A sharp knife is a safe knife. Um, if it's dull, you're going to be pushing really hard. There's potential for you to slip and hit your nice freshly tuned up edge, cut your finger open. We don't want any of that. So always make sure you have a nice sharp scraper um, so that you don't need to use a lot of pressure. This is a, a Toco um, scraper sharpener, a nice easy portable one that you can carry with you. It's got different uh, widths for the different size scrapers. Uh, you know, they make thick scrapers, thin scrapers. Um, I prefer them on a the little bit thicker side, that way they don't bend too much this way. Um, although it is nice to have a little bit of flexibility there. Um, so, you know, this one itself is basically you just slide the thing through and you're removing a little bit of layer. I like to rotate, you know, back and forth. Uh, because one of the things with this type of a uh, scraper sharpener is that you can actually, you know, work the middle too much. So then you end up with a concave when, when you go to try to w scrape, you hit here and hit here and you don't get all the wax out of the middle of the ski. So the one that I prefer is a cheap option um, from, you know, down at Home Depot. What I've got here is a basically just a sheetrock uh, sandpaper um, used for removing uh, mud from walls. Uh, any, any hardware store basically you can get that at. And then I've got a 90 degree piece of aluminum. So I'll place that right on there, set my scraper up against the side of it, and then just run it back and forth. This way I've got a nice smooth, clean edge ready to scrape the ski. Again, when you're scraping the ski, you always want to work from tip to tail in one direction. Uh, so you just go along here and remove the bulk of that wax. Sometimes it'll build up a little bit in the tips. You can take some short passes there. Make sure you get it all off. The objective is to remove as much of that wax as you can. The old wax on, wax off. One more pass. Clean it all off. Done a nice job here. You can see there's no areas with, with massive glumps of wax on there. Um, you know, obviously all the little pores are still full, which means we need to run the brush on it to get all that out and really buff it can kind of spit shine it. So again, I'm gonna use the roto brush here, but you do have cheaper options that you can do by hand, which I'll show you in a second. I, you know, I basically, I have this in reverse. So you can see my roto brush is spinning this way towards me making sure that I move down the ski and it's not gonna spin in my face. If you do it the other way, it's a little more difficult. So. As you see, I am kind of going back and forth a little bit here and there. Um, just make sure you know, you're not putting a lot of down pressure on it. This is a nylon brush. Um, if you were using a steel brush or something like that, you for sure would only want to go in that direction. Then I like to do one final pass just to make it nice and clean. As you can see now, we've got, you know, those little pores are cleaned out. We've got a nice polished shining base. If you do choose not to use the, the roto brush, um, you, know, you can see here the oval brushes. This is an example of a nylon brush, a horsehair brush, and a steel brush. Um, you know, if you're just gonna buy one brush, I'd recommend going with the horsehair which is kind of the final step, um, or the nylon. Essentially, if you were gonna buy all three, you'd use a steel, a nylon, and then a horsehair to really give it that polish. If you are gonna use this, um, a hand brush is super simple. Same thing, just work the ski from tip to tail. And again, you can see those little pieces of wax coming out of the pores. The more you brush your ski, the more polished it gets, the faster you get. So, there you have it. 
the easy hot wax at home.